Hi, my name is Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, I want to spend just a bit more time talking about some of the smaller syntax elements in the C Sharp language that you really need to master in order to understand how a properly formed line of code is constructed. So in a previous lesson, I may have said things like, just like you use a period at the end of a properly formed sentence in English, you use a semicolon in C Sharp to create a properly formed statement. I may have even briefly referred to C Sharp syntax as having nouns and verbs and so forth to kind of extend that analogy. And so I want to elaborate on that and clarify what I meant in this lesson. So let me start off by saying that there are basic building blocks when you write code. Uh, first of all, statements are complete thoughts or rather complete sentences in C Sharp. Statements are made up of one or more expressions and an expression is made up of operators and operands. And so we've seen several expressions already. We've seen expressions like the ones that, that uh, you see on the slide in front of you, things that we've covered so far in the examples that we've worked through, console.writeLine passing in the string hello world, if user value equals one, y equals x plus seven, my first string equals Bob, and so on. Uh, these expressions have two things in common. They consist of operators and operands. Operands are things like objects. Uh, think of classes like the console class that we've been using up to this point. Uh, they're also things like variables or literal strings that we've been using. So I suppose you could call these our nouns if you wanted to further extend that analogy. Operators are things like the plus operator, which when we're working with numerical data is our um, addition operator. Uh, the plus operator can also be used to concatenate strings together like we saw in the previous example. And so it's a concatenation character when used in the context of literal strings. Uh, there's also the equal sign, which we already noted means variable assignment. Also when we worked with the if statement, we noted the double equal sign, which is used for equality. So what I want to do is take a look at some other operators that we've seen, but we may not typically think of as operators. Uh, for example, the open and close parentheses. This is the operator for method invocation. So when we used it in console.readline, open parentheses, close parentheses, what we were really doing was saying we want to invoke the read line method found inside of the console class. So the open and close parentheses must be there in order for us to call or invoke that method. What happens if you leave it off? Why don't you try it in some code and see what happens? Uh, I suspect what you're going to see is you're going to get an exception uh, as you try to compile the application. Uh, another operator that we've been using up to this point is the dot member, which is member access. So again, using the console object, we accessed its members, in other words, the methods that belong to it using the dot operator. And we'll be using that a lot whenever we write code. And I'll have a lot more to say about classes and objects later in these lessons, but the key idea now is that dot, just like parentheses, just like the plus sign, just like the equal sign, all of those are operators. And there are quite a few operators that we need to memorize and internalize as we begin to uh, understand C-sharp. Uh, now there are many. I'm going to give you a subset to focus on. You may want to take some notes and even make a cheat sheet for yourself so you can remember these as you're trying to build some of your initial applications. So as you can see, I have a new project I already created called Operators Expression Statements. And I just created a nonsensical application to show you some of the operators in the context that you would typically see them in. For example, you can see that there is the assignment operator. We've already used that, where we're assigning the value of 3 to x. We have the addition operator, simply the plus sign. There's also a subtraction operator, as you would expect. It is the minus sign. There's the multiplication op uh, operator, which is the asterisk, or it's the character above the 8 key on your keyboard. There's the division operator, which is a forward slash. So in this case, 10 divided by 5, we would expect x to be the value of 2. We've already looked at the equality operator, which equates to either true or false. If x is equal to y, then this whole statement in between the parentheses is true. Otherwise, it's false. So if it's true, then execute the code block beneath it. And so we'll see that used here as we move through uh, the rest of these examples. In addition to equals, we can check for greater than, less than, 
greater or equal to or less than or equal to using kind of the same no notation. Greater than, less than, greater or equal to, less than or equal to. There's also the conditional and operator, which means this must be true and this must be true in order for this code block to be executed. So the double ampersands are conditional and operators. We use them when we are evaluating conditions. Likewise, we have the conditional or operator, which means either this must be true or that must be true in order for this block of code to be executed. We've already looked at that conditional operator uh, previously when we saw that we can set message equal to either car or boat based on this evaluation. So if x is equal to 1, then that's true, assign message this string value. Otherwise, assign the string value to the second value boat. And it's just a matter of memorization on using this syntax for the initial evaluation, then either true or false. And although I've demonstrated this only with strings, you can use it with any data type. And then finally, as I've already noted earlier, we have both me member access and method invocation. Here, we're accessing the right line method or the right line member of the console class and then invoking the method using the open and close parentheses and in this case we're also passing in a input parameter which we'll come back to as we learn more about methods in another video. So I covered these in kind of a rapid fire succession. Do you think you can memorize all of these? Well, you really need to. Uh, there's actually a longer list but I would say 90% of the time, these are the operators that you're going to be using on a daily basis. And in each of these cases, an expression is made up of a combination of operands like literal strings and variables and objects like the console class, as well as operators like those we just looked at. You use expressions to form statements, which are how the actions or instructions of an application are expressed. So we've already seen several great examples of statements so far as we've been writing these small applications. And you m might be wondering, well, where did we see statements? You know, what, what are you talking about specifically? Well, there are a number of different kinds of uh, statements. For example, at the very top, we can see if we were to come back here and just go int c, that is, in fact, a declaration statement. Everything that is necessary for a statement is included in that one line of code. Albeit very small in this case, some of them will require a lot more code. Uh, for example, there are expression statements like, let me just paste in an example, my string equals my first name plus my last name. Now I'm getting some squirrely lines here because uh, some red squiggly lines rather because uh, I haven't declared any of these variables yet. Uh, however, there is an expression statement. Here is an expression. My first name plus my last name and we're assigning that to my string and all of this together equals a statement. Another good example would be some value equals 3 times x divided by 100. And note again the use of the open and close parentheses in a different uh, context. Here we're using it in a, very much in a math or an algebraic uh, style where we're saying order of precedence. We want this to be executed first, then divide by 100. Okay. These are both expression statements. The expression is evaluated, evaluated first, and then the assignment happens. Then there are decision statements like we've seen before. Here, let me give you a really simple example. If x is greater than y, then z equals Bob. Now, we could separate it out into its own line of code. We could also wrap curly braces around it. And this would all be valid ways of creating decision statements. In its most simple form, however, we can just pull it all up like that. Now, 
there are other kinds of statements. There are iteration statements, for example, and I'll show you that in a future lesson. Uh, there are a couple of others, but basically these are the syntax rules of C-sharp. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, you can't do something like this and expect it to work. C-sharp will be like, have you lost your mind? What do you want me to do with that? So in situations like this, the IDE can catch these syntactical mistakes as compilation errors even before you attempt to compile or run the application in debug mode and you'll see it will display these little red squiggly lines as warnings. So for beginners, understanding that there is a proper syntax, just like there's a proper grammar in the English language, that's a big step in helping you solve your own problems or phrasing C-sharp instructions that the C-sharp compiler will accept. Okay, so let's recap what we learned in this lesson. Uh, statements are complete instructions in C-sharp. They consist of expressions. And a statement is like a sentence in the English language. And expressions are made up of operators and operands, which are things like nouns and verbs, essentially. Uh, operands are things like objects, or for now just think of classes like the console class, or variables, or literal strings, or things of that nature. These are the nouns of our C-sharp code. Operators are like verbs. They act on the operands. So we spend a lot of time looking at a laundry list of different operators. Um, and we've been using operators for all sorts of purposes up to now, even if we didn't realize or identify them quite that way as we've been moving through. Uh, and so you must memorize a list of operators. Uh, you can make a cheat sheet for yourself or you can just uh, try to power through and think what's logical in this situation. I need to add two things together. I'm going to use a plus sign. I need to evaluate greater than or equal to. I wonder if that'll work. Yeah, it does. Great. So sometimes they're intuitive. Sometimes you need to memorize a slightly longer list. Um, operands like variables and classes and strings are a little bit easier to memorize because you really create those yourself. You just have to memorize the operators because they're the way that you do something meaningful with your operands that you define and you create. Okay, so I just really wanted to make those distinctions and help you get a firmer grasp of the language. We'll continue on and learn a few more neat things in the next videos. We'll see you then. Thank you.